Hello and welcome again to uh, UCL Global Health. Buildings are good for your health, or they should be, and thinking about how we reconstruct societies and, and, and urban areas that have been involved in conflict, or indeed build for the future so that we are resistant to climate change is a, a really important part of development. And I'm joined by Murray Fraser. Uh, Murray is Professor of Architecture and of Global Culture at the Bartlett School of Architecture at UCL. You've been very involved with the Palestinians and thinking through regeneration in, in both Gaza and the West Bank, is yeah, that right? Absolutely right, yes. And what's the, it's PART, what does PART stand yeah, for? Yeah, so that was an acronym we came up with. It's the Palestine Regeneration Team, and it came out of um, discussions I was having with colleagues in my former institution, University of Westminster, uh, one a fantastic um, Palestinian student I was teaching called Yara Sharif, who was involved in these issues in Palestine, and a colleague called Nasser Golzari, who's Iranian but is very active in that region. And we realised there was a bit of a, a need for a kind of a, a new way of thinking about how to deal with certain of the kind of social and environmental um, sustainability issues in the Palestine, etc. Most of our work has been in the West Bank because because it's relatively um, easier to, to, to deal with, etc. But we've done one or two projects also with Gaza. And what we were finding really was that um, there was a need for new thinking about what to do, particularly with the older settlements that still exist, uh, not, not obviously in a very uh, politically sensitive and a very, very uh, dif difficult situation, but there was a number of old towns and villages with, with surviving heritage, which were sort of being lost effectively we're falling into the into the into the sand really and we, we realized that we needed a new way to think about these so so is this at a number of levels it's not just urban planning this is at right down to individual houses exactly. individual protection of heritage exactly that's right so we realized that this was these factors had to go together really if you're actually thinking about the issues you mentioned before health well-being etc sustainability you have to operate at a number of scales we're saying so the the large urban planning scale the the neighborhood scale but also what happens inside individual dwellings so if you take individual right what kind of things can you do that are, presumably they've got to be low cost there has to be absolutely low cost they also also low carbon low carbon we're looking to minimize the amount of energy consumption etc things like water and, and electricity and other supplies of, of natural resources are very scarce there's also an issue in the sense that for certainly for Palestinian people they're controlled effectively by Israel etc it costs them a lot of money so there's a kind of economic and also but there's a social side to it as well in the sense that we wanted to have projects that could be built also by local people you know using and with local, local architects and with local architects etc local groups and I'll mention that in a minute but certainly also in the end they could come out of the local community too much of um, development aid and in, in the world tends to come with people from outside imposing ideas and kind of methods which are not really indigenous to that area so we wanted to use methods that could be easily understood and adapted through self-building. Is there a kind of uh, traditional style for Palestinian architecture or a there's certainly not in, in the, the grand formal sense of the kind of architectural styles that tend to appear in the kind of the history books. It's a very much a vernacular tradition. There's the thick walls, flat roofed, etc. Um, relying on a number of kind of passive ways of trying to keep people cool in what are often very, very hot and very extreme climates, etc. But do you find that the, the younger Palestinian architects are bringing a a new dimension, a bit more style, a bit more thought, a bit more I think, I think, ornament. Uh, I think they're right. I think there's certainly a more in, interest in the aesthetic kind of considerations. There's obviously a, bit, a greater awareness of the kind of the global flows of architectural ideas. Probably a greater acceptance that you know that architecture can be both traditional and contemporary at the same time. Right. And the two are not mutually exclusive. And so what we found was that there's a number of people of a younger generation who are really trying to think of these kind of fresh approaches. Quite a few of them work for uh, for the main NGO we've been working there is a, a body called REWAC, the Centre for Architectural Conservation, which is a fantastic uh, Palestinian-run um, kind of organisation which has been doing kind of absolutely incredible uh, conservation work in the older towns and villages amidst a situation when obviously there's, there could be destruction at any moment, yeah. etc., and where there's very little money. And so we've been working a lot with them and they're very interested in these kind of new ideas to come in. And so being green is about also saving money, it's not it, just about... It's exactly about saving money, it's about actually understanding you know, that you know, there, there might be 
ways to you know to conserve en energy resources etc to save people money but also to give them probably a healthier and more sustainable lifestyle we were interestingly we we're dealing with problems that not only just come from the the classic ones you can think of of the conflict between Israel and Palestine but also within the emerging middle class within the West Bank there's a tendency to want to so we say take on Western lifestyles to take on high consumption air-conditioned lifestyles, you know, drive to mm -hmm. uh, settlements, etc. you know, reusing kind of very, very much that kind of international kind of idea of what advanced development is, etc. And we could see this essentially also then leading to the to the dereliction and, 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 and decay of the existing historic fabric. So we're, in many ways we're trying to say, you know, you don't have to develop in this way. There might be more, you know, kind of um, environmentally and also health conscious ways of actually and are, are the Palestinian authorities, I mean, in so many countries, you find you throw up your hands in horror at yeah. urban planning or lack yes. of it. Yes. Uh, and it seems that the dominant wealthy developers rule. Yes. Uh, is that the case in Palestine? I'm afraid, afraid that is the case. And that is one of the other areas that we're having real problems with, this idea of um, um, really trying to sort of we think bringing inappropriate forms of new development, etc. You can understand people's desire for wealth and for, you know, betterment, etc. But to then to then have that tied so narrowly to what we see as a kind of a, uh, shall we say, an environmentally unsatisfactory and also a very expensive way of development, which is only racking up problems for the future in terms of maintenance, etc. You know, the running costs of buildings, etc. We, we feel there should be a, a much more fundamental rethink now. But unfortunately, people, there are developers trying to make money, um, etc. Yeah. And, and, and curiously, it's been pointed out that quite a lot of these developments are actually mimicking um, sort of uh, forms of settlement, such as the Israeli uh, settlements on the, on, on the West Bank that, that people are meant to be protesting about, etc. So there's very curious things going on. Yeah. But we're sort of interested in this idea, really, of getting the aesthetics the environmental issues, the social sustainability and the health factors to work, work together. We just think there's a smarter conjunction between all those forces. It sounds uh, not only fairly optimistic, because there's the image of Palestine being all about despair and oppression. Exactly. So quite a lot of ideas and yeah. potentially things that are economically Viable. Yes, I think so. I think that's, this is exactly what's beginning to be realised. One hopes that the, a lot of the political problems, those issues can be can be resolved or certainly mitigated, etc. And I think everybody wants that. And surprisingly, a number of people on both sides actually want that. You know, we're always here, it's a deadlock, nothing can ever be done. But it's not necessarily the case. And there's a real sense, I think, for a better quality of life, really, for people as well, um, you know, of, of all groups. And, and so we were, so we were tapping into this, etc. There's, um, there's, well, there's always pointed out, you know, when you have these problem cases where there are these conflicts, etc., there's also opportunities. There's also ways of actually trying to think of better things. You, you certainly can't do the ordinary, easy, complacent kind of form of development. You really have to get your thinking caps on. And essentially, that's, I think, why we like it. Murray, thank you very much. Thank you.